We're counting down to Super J Cup, the extravaganza of all junior heavyweight tournaments, the pinnacle. This is what it's all about, folks. In 1994, invented by Jushin Thunder Liger, coming alive once again in 2020. And the eight best from around the world, all different promotions coming together, and they will do battle on both Fight TV and right here on NJPWWorld.com. My guest is one of those participants representing GCW, but he has been a regular on New Japan Strongest, Blake Christian. Good to talk to you once again, my friend. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here. I know you are putting in, I thank you very much, interrupting your workout, giving me just a few minutes of your time. Um, it's been a, uh, what a time, right? Because here you were working hard, doing your thing, and all of a sudden you get the shot on New Japan Strong, and now you find yourself in the Super J Cup. How is this? I mean, what a wild world, huh? I think it's I think it's pretty ironic though that me and you were it was just a few months ago that you and I were talking about it, uh, about like goals in New Japan. And I said the SJ Cup or a BOSJ. And now a few months later, here we are, and I'm 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 an entrant in this year's tournament. So I mean, I, I think it's ironic, but I mean I, I gotta I gotta I kinda believe in fate. So I mean, you know. I agree with that. Kinda, you put it out there in the universe, man, and it and it can happen. So, uh, Blake, I'm telling you right now that I want a full head of hair and a uh, a brand new car. So I'm saying that to the world, to the universe. Um, but seriously, though, uh, and we talked about how you know junior heavyweights they kind of focus in on that Super J Cup, and they you know that's like the holy grail of of wrestling events. Is there pressure built in on you now that you're in Super J Cup to outperform what you've already done, which is truly amazing? I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think, I think I always go into a mindset of a match where I have to outdo what I did uh, previously. I, I always try new things to invent new moves and stuff like that. So I, I don't, I don't really fall into that pressure of having to outperform because I, I do that in my own mind anyways you, you you know as I me being someone who has not exactly taken a lot of high risks in my life I notice you guys you like to have your toes right on the edge of the building and you could fall off at any second but you like that and you so you move your feet out further and further and further to where you almost lose your balance that's the thrill that's the rush am I getting this Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, uh, I don't know, like you've said it before, like when you're a high flyer, you live and die by the sword. Like, I mean, Osprey obviously changed his style of now that he's packed on a lot more muscle, but you know, I, I enjoy it. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a rush to me. It really is. And I know that you are going to have your hands full with that. You know, everybody has, a challenge in the first round like for example chris bay versus clark connors i'm interested in that match because chris bay is kind of this lightning bolt guy but clark connors for being you know a little bit more experienced but being in the young lion system i almost give the young lion the advantage you know what i mean you however have to face one of the most experienced guys that there is not just in this tournament but all of wrestling Ray Oris, who began his journey as a teenager, as a little kid, grew up in the business, and now you've got to face him in the first round. What's the game plan? Uh, I don't know. You know, like, luchadors are known for that high-flying lucha style, and you can't really prepare for it because you don't know what they're going to do. But, uh, you know, I, I've been to Mexico a few times, and uh, I've got my fair experience in luchador. So, um I don't know. I'm just going to do what I do. I bet he's got some tricks up his sleeve. He's probably got something cooked up for you. He might. He might. But I'm, I'm going to be ready for it. Um, you know, and again, I know that there is. And I, I want to give you a second here to talk about this because I know that, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing that there's a lot of interest in the athletes that are competing on New Japan Strong. But, uh, but you're sticking around, right? Absolutely. Well, good. That's good to hear and good to know. So uh, have you been fitted for the gold jacket yet? Are you, are you giving them your measurements? How's this going to work? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how it works. I think the, I think the jacket size is already is like a one size fits all because gotcha. I mean, we've seen it throughout the, uh, 
throughout the history that some of the jackets are fairly large. So, you know, I think it's one size fits all with them. Well, I think you'll fill it out well. I think the sleeve length will be right. I think it'll look good. And uh, what a, what a uh, cap to the most interesting year of your career, uh, because it's the final event for the junior heavyweights on December the 12th. It's right here on NJPWworld.com. You can also order it on Fight TV as well. Blake Christian, thank you for your time and best of luck in the tournament. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, we'll talk to Blake Christian again. And we certainly want to wish him the best of luck.